All right, welcome back, guys, uh, for part three. Uh, Ryan here with you again. Uh, like I said, part three of this uh, transmission clutch uh, rear main seal job. Uh, so basically, coming from the engine all the way back. Uh, so uh, last, the first video, we uh, kind of took everything up to, got everything ready to prep the transmission to come out. Uh, second video, we actually pulled the transmission, the old clutch, flywheel, and old main seal. Um, so today, we're going to start out uh, with uh, put, installing the new rear main seal on the engine here behind me and uh, put the flywheel on, torque it, and uh, get the uh, new clutch kit and uh, pressure plate, all that stuff, <clears throat> throw out bearing on the uh, pressure plate and the, uh, uh, the uh, clutch brake it'll go on the transmission. Then uh, we'll get the transmission prepped, uh, new uh, speed sensor, um, make sure everything's good to go on it, and then hopefully we'll get it slid in here today in this video. So I don't know, it might not, should be all on the same video for you guys, but it might not all get done for me today. So, cause I'm getting kind of a late start here. I had some other stuff to do today. So um, anyways, uh, so with that guys, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, we've got everything underneath the truck other than the main sill here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get set up and we'll get started by pushing this guy in with that installation tool that we got. And uh, then, like I said, we'll proceed with flywheel, clutch, and hopefully get that transmission stabbed up in here today. So uh, with that, we'll get started. Okay, so uh, back underneath the truck here, uh, I left our uh, studs in for the uh, removal. Um, these are actually more for the installation, um, but I used it to keep everything straight when I was doing the, uh, the removal of the old uh, remain seal. Um, so I left those in. Um, I've got the new remain seal here. And uh, what we're going to do with it on this seal, this black part, uh, we're going to, we got a soap uh, mixture here. And this is uh, one part uh, soap to 10 parts water. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to kind of apply it, use it for a lubricant on the edge of the seal. So I'm going to do that real quick here. And then we'll get the, uh, get the uh, installation tool set up on there. So. And um, I, I didn't, I didn't forgot to mention, but I did clean all this up before uh, we started this process. So we got that guy on there. And I'm not sure if this ring, I'm not sure if that'll all fit at this time. Hoping it will. Yeah, we're good. So they give you that little, I'll take that back off. So this little installation ring, this comes with the new seal and a kit. And this tool that I have, it's beveled. It's actually made for that, that ring because that tells you basically when to stop and all that good stuff. And the other thing, uh, once after you do your removal, um, you'll have some shavings, metal shavings that fall down into this tool. So make sure you clean those out as well. Um, because like, like I said, I went through that, I drilled through that old seal. Um, if you've watched the first part of this. Uh, so, I mean, there's rubber on the backside. So I mean, that'll clean, so you won't get steel shave. If you drill it right through, you shouldn't get steel shavings into the back of the engine, which it wouldn't be the end of the world. I mean, they'd get caught up either in the, sh the, uh, the pickup strainer or the, or the oil filter would catch them. So, um, but, uh, yeah, just make sure you clean those out of there before you start doing this. So, and this is a 15 16 So let me make sure we're pretty relatively even. Let's 
So we're going to start. Okay. So that all looks good to me. All right, so like I said, that all looks good around there. So we're gonna go ahead and take a 3 8 and take these studs out because we're done with this. All right, guys, so we're moving right along here. Uh, we got that rear main seal in. So next thing we're gonna do is uh, throw the flywheel back up in here, which I got it sitting here on the clutch caddy. And uh, one of the other benefit of having it on the caddy here is that it should be in the same position that we uh, took it off on. So it should go right back up because these holes, it goes on one way. So, I mean, you might have to keep spinning it around to find the right hole pattern. Um, but like I said, with this unit here, the way we got it positioned, it should go right back up on there. So, um, so I'm going to go ahead and get, uh, get this thing in position, get turned around. Uh, I got a torque wrench down here because we're going to do a two-stage torque on this. First stage is 92 foot-pounds. Final stage is 184 and then, um, you know, I'll do a kind of a zigzag pattern on the torques as well. So, um, but yeah, I'm going to get this guy set up in here. So I'll turn this camera around and uh, we'll get started. And uh, once we do that, we'll uh, get the, uh, the clutch uh, pilot shaft, uh, input shaft attachment back on the clutch caddy and uh, actually put the clutch up in here and uh, keep moving on. Like I said, hopefully I can have this guy thrown back up in here today. But uh, with that, I'm going to turn this around and we'll get started. All right, so I got the uh, caddy here in position with the flywheel. And there's one thing I wanted to mention that I didn't, I should have mentioned uh, in the last video in the removal, um, is when you take this flywheel out, check this ring gear on here. You know, they, they'll have a little angle on them, but um, this one looks relatively good shape because uh, if your, your starter can wear into this ring gear, and this ring gear can actually be replaced. I mean, you have to heat it up and take it off, press it off sometimes. Um, but they can be replaced if it's damaged to where it's worn out to where it could cause problems with your start. Like I said, it's not typical, but it's just something why, you, you know, just in, why you're in here just to check it out. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and raise this guy up and then uh, get it bolt started in here, which it might be up too far. said there isn't a whole lot of room in here but the good thing is there's a lot more room in underneath this truck than under most i was just talking to a friend about that the other day suddenly told him we could almost have enough room to have a picnic underneath here or something Knocking the camera down. So. And still, like I said, I have my little vice grip trick here. Uh, no leaks. <laughs> still got a reservoir full of coolant, so you don't have to uh, drain all your coolant if you don't want to. All 
I have put these up in here by hand, by myself, and um, it's not very fun. <laughs> it's a good way to get your fingers smashed and stuff like that. So this makes it a life a lot more easy, or a lot easier. This would be the proper English term. So that's pretty well lined up. Um, I'm gonna grab a bolt. I'm gonna put this in, but uh, I'm gonna have to take it back out and I'll tell you why here in a minute. Got that in there, that'll hold it so I can take this, get this clutch caddy out of the way here. It's a lot easier just by pulling this pin out. <laughs> The part about using these steel plates with um, in a driveway is I don't have the van the advantage of being able to just shove stuff out, you know, into the shop right here. So I got to kind of keep everything on uh, on my real estate here, basically. But uh, we'll, we'll struggle through. But uh, except you do what you got to do. that guy that out of here now um let me get some brake cleaner and clean this up because like i said i never did typically in the shop setting I, I would take this off from underneath the truck and spray it off and everything so i'm going to get like get high off of this stuff down here get in the closed environment
All right, now, the reason I said I was gonna have to take that bolt back out is uh, they want these bolts dipped. You dip them in uh, 1540 engine oil um, before you put them in. So I'll dip those in oil, so I'm gonna have to clean this off again anyways, because they're gonna get a little bit of oil on it most likely. Uh, so those new bolts, like I said, we're gonna, we're gonna dip each one of them in, put them in, and I'm gonna hit them with my impact just, just to snug them up. I'm, then we're gonna get the torque wrench out and torque them up down here, so. But uh, give me a second here to get situated with everything and um, we'll get back to it. Okay, so got a little uh, bottle of engine oil here. And what we're gonna do, just gonna dip these, these guys in it on the threads there. And kind of let it drain off a little bit. Like I said, you want to let it kind of drain off because you don't want to have a uh, hydraulic effect in there, which um, you could have with a head bolt if you got too much oil on it and then it goes down and bottoms out. Um, with the torque and all that, you could actually crack the block or a head or I mean whatever whatever mounting surface you're going into. So you always want to make sure you get. Like I said, you don't want it soaking wet to where it's gonna build up in the bottom. But I mean, I think these go through quite a ways, but, uh, but anyways. I'm gonna drag these in a little. Take this guy back out so I can lube that one up. But so I'm gonna go ahead and put these in because there's no sense of watching me put all these bolts in. Then um, I'll come back when we're ready to start torquing them and we'll do a couple of those and um, then do the second stage torch and torque and clean this up again and uh, we'll get the clutch pack ready. Okay so I got all these uh, bolts uh, zipped in here and uh, I got my I got a Mac Tools digital torque wrench I've had for a few years so it works out pretty well it's all digital um, has the beeps and all that when it's getting close and when it's when it's there so uh, we're going to start torquing these and I'm going to do just across one up here, one down here, and then just kind of go around that way. And this is first stage at 92. And then uh, after we go around them all once, then we'll kick it up to the, one, the final of 184. So. Oh, my torque wrench just shut off. <laughs> Said I've had this a couple of years, maybe the batteries just finally went dead, so. Let me... Either that or I hit the button. <laughs> All right. Yeah, my battery's going dead. So let me fix that real quick, and then um, like I said, I'll go ahead and finish these up. Then we'll come back and we'll do that uh, that second, that final torque of uh, 184. All right, so I got new batteries in my torque wrench here, and um, got everything the first stage done. So now we're gonna up this to the 184 final torque. All right, now we'll start up here on the top again. Ugh. All right. This might be kind of 
little tricky with this thing, letting it turn. I'm gonna have to stick something in there to hold that. Quick. Okay, well, I got a little bar up here, I believe, that'll hold this. So we'll find out. I already did this one. So, go this way. I should probably be marking these off as I'm doing them. go back around and check them all anyways around in a circle once I get them done this way so um, with that I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish these up um, then we're gonna go ahead and put this pilot bearing in up here and then um, I'm gonna clean up this surface this uh, mounting surface for the transmission here with a wire with a fine wire wheel real quick just to knock that scale off of there and um, so we'll go ahead and I'll finish this up, then uh, we'll put that pilot bearing in here real quick. Okay, so next thing I'll do is go ahead and throw this uh, pilot bearing in here. And I um, probably should have took the flywheel out and actually pressed it, took it in on my press in there. But um, we'll get it in down here. So, and I got a uh, two and an eighth inch socket. So you want to, if you're going to do it this way, uh, you just want a socket that will fit on that race and not get down in that black part there so you want it still in that race and then now uh, we'll grab my hammer back here and let's kind of go around in a circle here right there. That's it, it's in. So now like I said, I want to clean this up real quick. So I actually have my safety glasses because I don't know if you've ever had these little wires come off before, but I know they'll come through your clothes and I don't want one going through my eye. <laughs> but uh, you just want to use, this is aluminum. So you just want to use a real light, uh, real fine brush. You don't want to get in there like start reshaping metal or nothing. But
probably not good. This is probably a application where a mask might actually be useful. That's not too bad. So again, we're gonna have to clean that up. Let's get another rag and clean this uh, flywheel off here. So I just want to make it, make sure it's everything's off of here. Actually, some dust up in here. So, pretty satisfied with that. So, uh, next step, we're. Uh, get the uh, clutch caddy set up out here at the back of the truck and uh, I'll bring the clutch pack up and we'll start laying that on and uh, get that ready to bring in here so I got a little I got a little house cleaning to do under here first um, and actually I think these these water lines here I think I'm gonna cut these zip ties here because I can see when I'm trying to align this transmission especially by myself I can see these probably getting in the way so we're probably gonna be better off just to 
cut the zip ties, then I can just lay everything up on top. Then I'll have to struggle with trying to get it back down along through here. But um, so at least it uh, won't be in our way during the hard part. All right, so I got the uh, clutch pack here, ready to go in. And I got the uh, clutch caddy set up over here. Uh, so what I got to do, I'm going to take this, this disc off the top here. And uh, to lighten the load a little bit. Not by much. So this is all bolted. These used to this intermediate disc, like on the old clutch there, you could separate all that and make this a lot lighter. But this one is a little bit different to where they've changed the design to where it's all bolted together. I mean, I guess I could take it apart, but I'd rather just leave it alone. So I'm gonna have to pick that whole thing up and set it down on that shaft on the clutch caddy. So let me get set up here and. Uh, We'll go ahead and do that. Yeah, all right, this is gonna suck. Ah. Okay, <laughs> it's on there. So now I gotta put this other disc back on. And these discs are marked like where it says, if you can see that intermediate this side, intermediate plate this side, this is the intermediate plate. So to go this way, or sometimes they might say flywheel side. All right. And I got that sitting on that. I actually need to turn that a little bit. There we go. All right, so it's on there. Take this sticker off here. It's gonna burn up anyways. Then, um, I'll go ahead and get set up and uh, we'll drag it underneath there and uh, put this guy in and then uh, get, get start getting the training ready. All right guys, so I got the uh, clutch cat and everything in here at the clutch pack. Uh, so I set the camera back a little bit uh, so I can get this in position. Then uh, once I get it up in there, we can get a little bit better view here of everything. Uh, so first thing I'm gonna drag this up a little bit. And then I gotta flip that clutch down. And there is a, uh, a pitch adjustment here to where I can change how straight everything's going in and all that. So that don't look too bad there. We'll make adjustments as necessary. All right, so sorry about that there. My uh, phone died, My that's what I use for a camera here. And uh, luckily it saved the video where was that. Uh, so I uh, went ahead and put all the bolts in. I mean, I, they're just kind of snug, they're not tight. Um, so I kind of got a little bit ahead of myself there. So uh, yeah, I've been kind of going video crazy today. So uh, yeah, I didn't realize I was down to that uh, low power level. So got all these started. And I'm going to start snugging them up with the bottom here. 
and then after I'm comfortable with it we will um, torque these to about 50 foot-pounds of torque Then we kind of want to go with a zigzag type of pattern here. Yeah, I think I got them all, so I'll go around and check. All right, now we can, um, Take the pressure off the clutch caddy here. Hopefully to come out. Actually, I'm gonna pull this pin. And I want that to stay in. <laughs> and I, you know, then that's my alignment tool, basically. I probably shouldn't have pulled that out yet until I torqued everything, but just kind of happened. So I'll get this clutch caddy out of the way here. And we're done with this guy, I think, until we do the drive shaft, so I'll probably use it for that. Um, we'll get this out of the way, then we'll get the, the torque wrench back out here. Okay, so I got my torque wrench set up for uh, 50 pounds. So I'm using an extension on here. All right, I think I got them all. So I go back around and check.
All right, so got all that done. So everything looks good. This should be at the top. We'll have to take this grease fitting out to put our grease line in. Um, other than that, there's two little blocks of wood. I'll make sure you take those out before you go any further. If you forget those, they'll cause you trouble in the future. feel too bad there. All of our spines are lined up. So like I said, the only thing else we got to do is change out that grease line and um, then we'll be ready for transmission in here. So uh, I'll take that guy out. I mean, he's really, uh, he said, just got to take that grease fin out and I got another, that little hose to go in there and, and that'll be it. So with that, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, get the transmission and everything ready out there. And um, like I said, that'd be, that's the worst part of this is going to be the stab when you're taking the transmission out and when you're putting it back in, when we got to stab that guy in. So, um, but uh, we'll get through it. All right, so I uh, got the transmission uh, about half underneath here. I um, had my wife uh, last night use the tractor and set it down on the uh, jack and got it all positioned the way that I wanted it. Um, I did make one little oversight that I was thinking about when I was going to bed last night that um, I forgot to put this transmission into gear. And the reason we need to do that is we're going to have to rotate this input shaft as we slide the transmission in and get it lined up with the splines and we have to be able to turn it obviously you're not going to be able to stick your hand up in here while you're trying to shove it in so we got to be able to turn it from the back so to do that we got to put this transmission in gear so and i already have this strap down and i'm not pulling this thing back out of here uh, since i already have it in this far so i've got to pop this strap loose And then I cut it, just cut a little piece of wood here to keep debris and stuff out of this. So now here's where your shifter goes in this little hole right here. So what I'm gonna try to do is turn that over. I'll try to put this into gear. I'm not sure I may have to use the little pry bar here. Okay. So now you can see as I turn the front. The output shaft is turning there. So, and uh, normally I would also put that yoke on, but in this case, <clears throat> I need that little bit of extra room up there to get up behind and get on top of the transmission to put those bolts in. So I may stick that when we're putting the transmission on, and I may um, may stick that yoke on there momentarily. But um, I'll probably take it back off. That way I got like an extra three, four inches of clearance where I can, I'm skinny enough to get up on top from the back and on top of the transmission to put the top bolts and rest of the assembly up there. So I'm gonna strap this back up the way we had it. And then uh, we're gonna struggle up through here and get this thing. We got about five or six feet to go up here. So it's kind of, for some reason it looks tighter than what it was. This is the same transmission, but uh, all right, so put this back together real quick and then uh, we'll get turned around here and start pulling this thing up forward then once we get a little bit closer up in front of this uh, uh, you can't see it this air tank here like I said it's kind of tight 
once I get more forward, then I'll put that uh, that uh, bell housing, front uh, transmission housing deal on there. So, so it made it a little bit, gave us a little, made it a little bit easier by by uh, putting it on underneath there. So then we'll put the uh, clutch brake on and uh, put this thing up in there. I just want to get this, once I get past this air tank here, that um, I can go ahead and put that bell housing on. All right. So, and we cleaned that housing up, so that, that's aluminum. We cleaned that up real well yesterday because it actually cover. I mean, these bearings here, so it kind of covers, is part, of, technically, kind of part of the internal, the internals of the uh, transmission here. So, all right, I gotta do a little rearranging here, grab that stuff, and then, uh, with this guy in. Okay, not a lot of room now. I think that's everybody. Nope, messing with one right here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these down and then um we're gonna have to reposition everything, the camera and all that, and uh, 
go ahead and try to put this thing in. I said, oh, I gotta grab that. Uh, another trip out of here. I forgot to grab that uh, clutch brake to put in here as well, so. But, oh well, we'll uh, go ahead and get these tightened up and we will proceed. All right, so I think we got the uh, housing here, which you can't see. <laughs> uh, hold on, because I'm in very tight quarters now with this tranny sitting up in here with the flywheel housing or the bell housing and all that on. Um, so we're pretty well ready for the main event here. So can I get this thing in is gonna be the question. So uh, one thing, I've I already got all my everything. I got my bolts down here in a uh, magnetic pan for the uh, flywheel housing. And then um, I've got, everything's 5 8 so I've got 5 8 so like at every, I've got a wrench, I've got a 3 8 drive with an extension, I've got my half inch uh, D-Weld impact with a uh, power swivel on it. So I got everything, I got a couple of pry bars, so I just want to, you know, want to clear everything out of the way and pretty much have everything I need within arm's length uh, reach here. So um, I did put this uh, grease hose on as well because uh, that would be a challenge to get up in there. So I do uh, have the clutch uh, break in here, which I'll show you that. So and I use the uh, splittable ones, so that way if there's ever a problem, you don't have to pull the transmission or use a special tool to cut the old ones. So and with these, there's a plastic tab and that, that plastic tab goes towards the transmission. So we got that guy in there. We got our uh, clutch fork in the up position to go up over the, um, what you would call it there, the, uh, I can't think, the uh, throwout bearing. <laughs> so, uh, so with that, uh, I'm gonna get behind this thing and we are going to start doing this. So I, I think it's pretty well uh, mostly lined up, but I gotta pull this uh, clutch caddy uh, alignment tool spline deal out of here. So pull that guy out. So, so we get this guy out of here and then um, I'm gonna get in the back of this and start raising it up and pushing it in and um, see what develops here. All right, I think that's about the best view I'm gonna be able to get with you guys doing this by myself with uh, not a camera woman here to help me. Um, so I'm gonna go to the back here. So give me a second um, and I'm gonna jack this up and we're gonna start getting this shaft here lined up up here and then um we, then we'll want to get our surface our mounting surfaces somewhat uh level or flush or whatever you want to call it same amount of distance in between on side to side and, and down and bottom and then um we'll start pushing it in
come up and see where I'm at. Thing it sucks when you're doing this by yourself. You don't have anybody to tell you where you're at. So it's gonna be a gonna keep coming from the front to the back. I just need to back up a little bit, and I think I'm pretty close. here Back here again.
caught up in the spines yet. Sorry, what I'm doing now is checking each side to side and my gap at the top and the bottom and it looks like I got a little, I need to tilt the back down a little bit because I got a bigger, bigger gap here than on the top from this vintage point anyways. So we got, we want to have the same gap all the way around. So I'm going to have to drop it down just a hair and then, um, so make sure that clutch works on the top there. So all right, I'm going to drop it down and tilt it back just a little bit, and hopefully I can push it on in. up here it isn't And that gap all around looks relatively good, so I think we might be just held up in the spines. The thing we gotta check for is just to make sure there's no, you know, you got these little brackets and stuff, just to make sure they're not hanging down in between. Oh, I think I'm all the way in. <laughs> so um, now I got, I need to roll this just a hair. are off at about a half an inch or half a hole roughly almost 
I'm liking that. That looks pretty good there. Let me um, see if I let me check our gap all the way around, and um, just to make sure that we're in in the pilot bearing. So actually, my gap's a little bit bigger over on this passenger side. We're in. We're in over on the um, the right side there. So actually, I'm gonna take this. I should have took this cover off a long time ago. Um, <laughs> and go figure. That's the the wrench that I don't have under here. Slipping today. I think this is a half. been a lot easier to take this out earlier. I don't know why I didn't do it then. But, so I just want to look up in there and make sure everything, clutch fork and all that's where it's supposed to be before we start throwing bolts and stuff in this because that is the worst thing. I hate rework. Especially when you're working with something this big by yourself. Here to be where they're supposed to be. Um, I'm gonna get a light. All right, so it's pretty well lined up here. Uh, my clutch fork looks okay. I got the gap closed up down here on the bottom. I got just the hair on the top, so I'm gonna start uh, a couple bolts down here on the bottom, and then I'm gonna jack up real lightly. Uh, like I said, I'm just putting these in here for guide purposes. I'm not trying to hold it or anything. Um, since we got this closed up, because you never want to pull this in with the bolts, because you could break something. I, I tore the whole back end out of a new process 435 transmission once. It wasn't going in all the way. 
and I had a great idea that I would uh, just put the bolts in it and it busted the whole back end of the transmission off because it was I actually had to make a spacer for that transmission because the input shaft was too long because um, I was kind of doing a custom job on an old Ford F350 but I learned my lesson that time because it uh, cost me about $400 for that transmission this was 20, <laughs> 20 years ago Okay, so now I'm going to jack up just a little bit and get that top slung in. Yeah, two bolts for the top. here This is easier said than done. <laughs>
arms. I think that's close on like a sixteenth of an inch, but my obsessive compulsiveness will not just let it go and just tighten them up. Um, but I think that's what's going to have to happen. Check this clutch book again. go. Alright, that looks better. Alrighty, now I'm going to attempt to get this perfect. <laughs> It's in. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, I'm gonna go up top side and uh, snug these guys up on the top. Then we'll come just come around uh, from there. And uh, once we get them all in, we can uh, get this jack out of the way. So. All right, so uh, I got all the bolts in, got everything closed up, everything looks good. Um, I'm gonna, uh, I, I highly, I mean, some people may disagree. Um, but I highly recommend torquing these these bolts from this fly, uh, transmission adapter to the uh, flywheel housing or bell housing. And the reason that is is that you're going into aluminum, and I believe these are these are five eighths heads so that make it a seven sixteenths bolt. Um, so uh, standard torque on something like that normally would be like right around fifty foot pounds of torque. Um, given this is aluminum, and it's a softer material, softer threads. Uh, I, I believe what they recommend is 25 to 31 foot pounds, which um, I have a little 3 8 torque wrench here, and it's an inch pound, so we're going to go to 360 inch pounds, which would be 30 foot pounds. And uh, I mean, you could, I mean, with a 3 8 ratchet, you could actually strip these threads out on this thing. And you got to realize all the weight on this particular truck here, there's no transmission bracket or brace or anything down here so all this weight relies on the integrity of these uh, these bolts up here so if you can see that you know all these bolts we saw earlier so so if one of those is compromised or a couple more compromised where that the threads are bad and the bolts they can they can strip and pull out um, I've actually seen a transmission fall out of a truck and um, I've known guys that use impacts to put these bolts in and I, I just I wouldn't I wouldn't do it if it was if it was me. So we're, I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna torque these real quick, and then, and then we're and I'm gonna do this while we still have the uh, jack. I mean if everything's tight, but I'm still gonna leave uh, the jack up here uh, just to hold it because I don't want it because I could throw if there's weight of this, for, you know if it's hanging out uh, or there's weight hanging on that bolt it could affect my torque. Um, so that's why I'm gonna leave the transmission uh, jack until we torque this. So I'm gonna go around and do those real quick, and then uh, we're gonna get this jack out of here. And that's pretty well gonna conclude uh, this portion of this project. So then uh, next is the part three anyways. Then uh, part four will be putting everything, buttoning everything up and um, should have this thing done today, so. Side. Okay, so I got everything uh, torqued up there. Everything looks good. So I'm going to pull the strap off here and we're going to uh, get this jack out of here, get this thing out of the way because it's uh, really prohibiting my movement around through here. So. Uh.
I didn't do that. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I did that. Oh, oh we're all right. <laughs> okay. Get this thing done with the transmission jack. block of wood here was actually like the perfect size to level and it even had that angle in it um, just by chance that was perfect for keeping that transmission level on there so sometimes you just get lucky things like that <clears throat> all right I'm gonna pull this guy out of here Transmission still in gear. So that is, uh, that's it right there. Yeah. All right, guys, so that is it. The uh, transmission's up in here, and uh, we're ready to start uh, buttoning everything up. Uh, so I got a couple little brackets I got to put in onto the top of the transmission up there, and uh, then we got to put those coolant uh, cooler line fittings back on. So um, that'll be part three. So this is going to conclude the uh, the second part of this. So like I said, I didn't want to um, make like a two-hour long video of this thing, even with editing. So we uh, decided to split this up in a couple parts. So uh, the part you just watched that was uh, basically <clears throat> the uh, installing the main seal flywheel, clutch pack, uh, and the transmission, putting it back in. So the next part, like I said, part four and the final part of this is uh, going to be buttoning everything back up, you know, all the uh, sensors down here, water lines, uh, drive lines, exhaust back on, all that good stuff. And I got a bracket, uh, frame, frame bracket down here to put on as well. Um, then uh, filling it up with oil and finally a, a little test drive. So. Uh, that's pretty much it guys for today or for this video i've got a lot more to do today um, but anyways um so if you're new uh subscribe if you haven't already uh hit that bell for the updates uh you know give us that uh thumbs up like i said that thumbs up the like that's the best way to help us out to uh you know to support the channel and uh you know get those videos out to other people on um, the way that uh youtube works so um, so we appreciate all the support and everything guys. Um, so we've been a little bit slow on the business right now trying to get wrap stuff up around here, uh, with personal pro projects like this. And, um, also this other property we're buying for a shop and all that. So, um, anyways, other than that, um, if you guys are interested in farm stuff, I always put it out there. Uh, we, we moved all of our farm tractor videos of chickens, animals. Uh, and just general farm and stuff, we put that on a whole separate channel. So if you're interested in that, I've always got people asking me. Um, we always put the link to that other channel as well. So check that out. And uh, we'd like to see more people over there think, as, as well. So uh, again, guys, thanks for watching. Um, stay tuned for the uh, final part of this to see if it works. <laughs> um, I think it will, hopefully. <laughs> um, but uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.